So moving on, I'm going to have a look at creating the uh, knobs on the top. So if we come in, we've got these kind of elements here. And again, we've got the good reference from the uh, orthographic view from the top. So we've got that there. And also with the side, we can see kind of roughly the height kind of gauge in there. So what we want to do <coughs> is create this panel, but we want to be able to cut out these um, shapes so we have those holes. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. At the moment, we've got quite a lot of geometry in here already, which potentially is going to cause us uh, some issues because it's just going to, um, you know, we're just we're going to need to add in quite a lot of information here. So, because of the nature of this, I'm going to grow this um, selection once more, and I want to come in to make sure might come out and upside down or inside it here to make sure that I come right to the edge. I think maybe one more. I don't want to be going around the corner basically is what I'm getting at. Which I have done so I can just um, shrink that selection with the less less than icon. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. And then with this, I can actually just extract the face completely. Um, and then it was still, when you hit three on the keyboard, it will all still kind of line up nicely. But the difference is now that I have this and it's its own separate piece, I can strip out what I don't need because I don't need this information anymore. So if I delete that, one on the keyboard, <coughs> pardon me. And delete this. Oops. Or we'll just merge that in. I can just basically have a standard plane doesn't even need to be bent <coughs> so I can just scale that flat and just make sure that it comes over so uh, it's, I've got a basically a clean surface now for me to work on and we've still got that edge which kind of fits in there nicely. So this is one way of doing it. Um, and I'm just going to duplicate that and move it over for a moment so I can show you a second way. Okay, so Maya just crashed on me. Um, so I just had to reopen this. Um, but I've also just realized I paused the recording whilst I coughed uh, and then realized I hadn't hit play. So just to recap what I've done, I've cut out this because uh, I can't remember where I, where, I, where I came from. So I cut this piece out separate from that. And then if I just hide it, I've essentially just deleted all the edges. So I've got a simple plane that covers over that. So if I just do the x-ray for a moment, you can see I've just got a basic plane now that just has far simpler geometry for me to kind of work on. And I can just straighten that out straighten that out and I've done that already on the sides <clears throat> and it, this just gives me a much easier piece to work with and I will I can oops um, delete that edge as well if I really want to so I've just got a basic plane um, I the reason why I duplicated the face in the first place was just simply because then I had it uh, already in place lined up it would be fine just to bring in a plane and move it in place and to snap it. Um, but that's just the way I did it. So long as it is perfectly matching up and lining up there, it doesn't matter that it's overhanging here because it's just my high poly. It's just being used for a bake anyway. Um, even if it's a low poly, it would be fine. But now I've got that. So I can start working on this within here. So I'm going to just 
un uh, to take my reference my image planes off reference so i can select this and then shift select that plane and then control one to isolate those two items in there so i've just got a little easier to see and then i'm going to come back in and then i'm just going to hit control alt and s because at this point for whatever reason it um crashed on me i haven't done that for a long time and then it will okay so it's saved and the temp uh, data because i reloaded that so what i will do is just file and save scene as and then radio for so i'll manually come back in and reset that save data um so that's there okay so now let's have a look at this it's asymmetrical with these holes so i can't just do half and i'm going to start coming in by placing in some edge loops uh okay why let me just make sure that that is on one and not smooth mode so i'm going to come in and place some edge loops in here which will indicate where those buttons are going to be so i'm just i'm focusing on those buttons first and let's just come in and move those up now these should be all the same size so and I'm, at the moment i'm doing it all by eye so if you want to be particularly specific about it um, I'm just going to duplicate that face. There we go. I want to get it selected first. Center the pivot on it, move it up. And I'm just going to extrude that out a little bit to get that button. And we can use this anyway for the button. Um, but then I will select that edge. And actually just snap it, hold down V and snap it to that. So then I know that I'm going to get it exactly right. And then I'll just move that along. And again, just snap. So then I know that I've got the consistency that I want. And then that can stay there because it's curved out. And then that can just be up. Okay, so that'll do for now. Um, I will want to keep that um, as a button, but for now I'm just going to delete it. I'll do it, bring it back later. So now I've got those four kind of laid out. We now look at this, and I'm going to need some. Let's put the tool up. I'm going to need a couple of additional edges there. And then I can reuse this edge and just pull that in here. And I'll do the same on this side to pull that in. And those, they'll just trail through and that's absolutely fine. And then we need to figure out how we're going to do those holes. And we'll do that in a moment. So um, we will potentially Essentially, I need um, to have this kind of thing going on. So middle mouse, middle mouse. So I want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points surrounding each circle. So I will do, I've got these points there. So I want that to kind of cut through the middle as well. And I don't want these to necessarily cut through here, but um, they may have to at this point. So I'm just going to grab these for the time being. I want to try and keep them as straight as possible for now. 
So I'm basically just creating a cross through the center wherever wherever I can. Um, and we'll figure this out in a moment. And um, to even that up, I might just put a couple of loops in there. But you'll see why this is important when we come to it. And I may duplicate that and then just fit it in here at a later date. But then I want that hole basically here. Middle mouse to get that central. <clears throat> And I'm aware that there was some skewing going on here. So I just want to kind of get it roughly in place for now. So there's a lot of geometry in here at the minute, and it's going to be a little bit messy. So I'm just essentially planning out, laying down the groundwork for what I will need um, going forward. And then we'll see where we've got. So first of all, I'm going to take this and then drag or holding down the tab key and select these and I've just realized I've got those circles there as well. So I've got this and then I can just extrude that down somewhat. And then when I hit three in the keyboard you'll see it starts to um, do its thing. And then what I want to do is add in support loops that go around this but what i may actually do thinking about this is divide this into sections which i think will be a little bit better actually so actually i'm going to delete these and i'm going to delete these and i'm just going to have this as a section all of its own um and I think that's the way I'm going to go with this. And then in order for me to do this as well, I think I'm going to have to just take this edge and extrude that out just a little bit. So I'm going to so let me just go back and explain what I just did there. So I'm selecting this edge and this edge. Shift right click extrude. But at the moment you see that the um, axis, the gizmo is on the last edge selected and it follows that the normals of that, which is not what I want. So by hitting W, it resets it to world, not, uh, world value. And then I can just expand that out a little bit here, um, which is what I want to do. Then I'm going to just take that edge and just straighten it off. I'm going to do the same with this edge and straighten it off. So I've got something easier to kind of navigate and work through. And again, just for personal preference, I prefer to keep things neat. So I'm going to bring these in where I can like so, um, and then go from here. So I'm going to do tab and then, oh, actually I'll just grab a box of those middle faces and just shift, take these faces, come in. Okay, I've already got them extruded, I forgot. And then what I wanna do now is add in multi-cuts. And this is why I've decided to go this way because by doing this, I don't want these additional loops to carry on over to where I need those rounded edges. So I'm going to do that. If I hit three on the keyboard, you'll see it start to um, create that edge. And now if I come along on these edges, one and two, and hit three, you'll see that it's starting to kind of harden up. And then I want this edge and this edge you see it's what's happening there and then if i do this edge here as well then it will hold that edge and for this one if i do it kind of not so much do one in the middle And I may, let's just see if I delete those edges. I need that support, uh, but can I delete? Yep, 
that edge. Hang on. Come back, come back, come back. Uh, I want to bevel, I think, this edge to get the curve. Um, okay, it's just experimenting again. Something that really should be quite simple. So bevel, undo. I want to delete these edges first, the supporting edges. And just rewind a minute. One, two. And this is symmetrical at this point now, so I could just do half. And then I want to bevel. It enables me to get a better thing. And there we go. That's better. That's more like it. And then I want to just come in. I want to tidy up that geometry a little. So I may decide actually I want to just come straight up. Vertex target weld and bring that straight across to there. And then I can delete that edge. Oops. Move that across just for neatness. Let's just work on this half for now. So I want to add in a multi-cut, so I'm just holding down control and left click to add in those loops. And then I want it that side as well. not letting me cut through that for some reason so i'm just going to uh hang on one two that's because it's not a four-sided shape i'm going to come in and just come and join that across there so then it will right so and then i'm going to come in and put in a loop around there and there and I also want a loop that goes around this. And I may need to just redirect that corner. So what I mean by that is just come in and tie that off there. Or rather that way. Merge and target weld and bring those to that point. And then I can delete those edges, like so. so. Bring that to there. And weld those in. And get rid of those so then it's okay hit three in the keyboard and let's just test how it's looking it's looking all right uh, and then i also want to just take that face uh, okay need where's that going the issue if i do that and hit three in the keyboard then it's going to 
pinch in there, which is not what I want, but I want to kind of keep this this shape here. So what I may do is get rid of that. Oops. It's always a question of whether you bevel or not. So to bevel or not to bevel. Um, now I'm going to use it and then you can always tie off. I'm going to do what I did a moment ago. So that there and that there and this there. But you need to, I want to make sure that those don't carry on over there. So I'm going to middle mouse click in here. And then also... Actually, I don't need that. Um, I'm going to take this edge that's going around and redirect it in the middle on the floor as well. So that's what I want to do. Got there in the end. I'm going to take and delete that. I'm going to delete this one at the moment. So it's hard to see because I've got that texture on. I'm just going to right click material attributions or sorry, existing and go back to lamp one. Makes it a bit easier. And I'm going to select this first. And then I'm going to extrude with an offset 0.5 perhaps. No. 0 0.05 is what I wanted. Um, like this. So then we've already got that kind of groundwork in place. And then I want let's have a look. I want this to come down there, but then multi you know well vertices merge merge. I weld that in there and that in there. Then we've got that, and then I will come in and do a multi cut here. Oops. And then weld that in there. So then I can delete that edge, which is the one that's going to go up and over there. So I can delete that edge. <coughs> Pardon me. And I'm going to do the same over this side. Vertex. And then F on the keyboard to zoom in. Wrong V. Weld that off there. Edge, delete that one. Three on the keyboard, and now it's holding those corners in nicely. But then I've also got the curve on this end, and the geometry is all still relatively nice. Got there in the end. Um, <coughs> so we come in, look on this. It's three on the keyboard and then we can sort of see what's happening 
and I can just grab these vertices and then I can just start playing around and it's not quite got the shape that I want yet. So can I get away with sticking another loop in here and hit three and then I can just perhaps give this a little bit more attention. Like so. so I'm pretty happy with that. I think that fits suitably. And modeled in. And then I just need to worry about this bit, which should be relatively straightforward. Um, because, I mean, there'll just be a glass over that, so it will be flat. So I just need to go and select all the edges on this. And bevel, take off chamfer, bring this in nice and tight. And then I will, oops, not create a cylinder. Multi cut tool, and then I'm just going to tie take that off just up there. That's fine. Or even up to that, and that makes a triangle. So I'll just do it for there. That's okay. Not going to go anywhere. Um, and I'll do the same down here because otherwise, if I hit three, it will go. Well, it doesn't actually, to be fair, no, but it could go nasty. So I'm just going to tie that off anyway. And on that one, I'm going to take it all the way to the corner. That's fine. And then that's okay there. So you can see when I hit three on the keyboard, now that retains that nice sharp edging. Let's just quickly assign existing material and blin. Am I, am I getting any artifacts? And essentially what I'm looking for is where I've got these lines that are quite tight together. But no, it's fine. That's working out okay. And what you can do in this is essentially just, I can grab these and I can just sort of widen those out a bit. I can merge them together as well, to be fair, um, but I don't want any kind of pinching. So I'm just going to spread those out just to try and prevent as much as, as possible. artifacts so we've got that three in the keyboard smooth that okay getting that nice edge catch uh, the light on the edges that there's a bit soft what's going on what have i missed multi -ed. cut here and here is what i've missed Cool. So that is that done. So I will now just center my pivot. Ooh, what are you? That's a cylinder I created. Get rid of that. Um, I will select this, center my pivot, delete my history, freeze my transformations, move it to the center, control D to duplicate, and then negative one in the X, negative one to flip it and combine it. And then grab my vertices down the middle, 46, 23, merged beautifully, and three on the keyboard. And we got that. So that looks good. That'll bake. Nice. Um, and then we'll create the uh, uh, buttons and whatnot in a moment. But for now, I'm happy with that. Now, if I was, for example, wanting to do this, um, 
you could potentially use the method which is called uh, floaters. Oops, hang on, cancel. Let me just control one to bring everything else back. Um, and I'm just going to save this. 05. Um, I thought I duplicated the, the mesh over. Control one. Evidently not. Um, so let's just grab a plane, fill it up, expand it out. So this is what I could have done the other way rather than duplicating. And then I just hold down V and snap that down into the relevant place. Should be up the top. And then I can just expand that out. So that's either way that I could have just created that plane rather than duplicating the face, arguably quicker. Um, and then I'm going to come in and say, just get this. Hit one on the keyboard. I want to grow my selection to make sure I've just got that base plate there. Shift right click and duplicate face. I don't want to extract it. I just want to copy it. Center my pivot, pull it up, and I'm going to duplicate that again actually because I will use that. Move this over here, um, and now I'm going to kind of work in the opposite way. Hit F on the keyboard. I'm going to delete the supporting edge loops first of all, and then I'm going to select around the outside and then extrude up. I might just sort of push that out a bit, it'll work better on there. Fake. And then if I then extrude that again one more time on the uh, thickness on this time, so then it shares the same um, normal information as the one underneath it. And I've got a little bit too much information now on this. So let's just step back and figure out where those, that vert is. There it is. Well in there. There we go. So that was only four. So set the face, extrude up, and then I'm just going to offset it a little bit outwards. I can delete that, select the edge, extrude, thickness out, but at the moment you can see it's not level. So we'll then hit W, select that, hold down V and snap that up. And at the moment it's inside out, it's black. So I'm going to select this and go to Mesh Display and Reverse, and that makes it grey. So next, I will then create my bevels, as I would do before, and then select the edges in here that I want to make sure remain intact. And I'm going to bevel. I'm going to turn the chamfer off and reduce the fraction, and then hit 3 on the keyboard. So then I've got that indentation there. But the thing is, if I just make sure I assign back to Blin, uh, Lambert, sorry, and then if I just sit this above my mesh, when I look from vertical, when I look straight down on it, which is how it will bake, uh, and then turn off this, you can't tell that it, it just looks like it's a part of the geometry. And I come over here. Well, to be fair, you can't see it um, for this at the moment because there's no lighting. And I've done this directly down. So that may have some baking issues in the sense of really, it, this is kind of how it will bake. So the fact that it's a perfect right angle to this, you're not seeing that information. Um, but that is just the hole. So that's just going to give me some ambient occlusion more than anything. But the point I'm making is that I can then just duplicate move across, duplicate, move across, and then I might want to just add in a middle loop. If on the keyboard, I can play around with this. I'm just being quick with this because I'm not really going with this. But these are then would be known as floaters. Just adjust that. Uh, so you can create this and then when that bakes in a normal, uh, that will just bake down into a normal map. <coughs> so that works as well, having floaters just hovering above the surface. 
So that is a perfectly acceptable method as well. Each have their pros and cons. Um, and you can just apply that and all the information over it. And when it bakes, you will get that bake information. So it all just depends on the method in which you want to go with. I personally, I like doing this because I find uh, with personal work as well, I'll still use floaters from uh, every now and again, but I do quite like modeling things into the geometry just because I feel like it's good practice and it's good for me just to maintain control and, and topology and that all that kind of stuff. So anyway, moving on, let's just remove these edges again from this. Remembering that vert was remaining in place, so I'm going to merge that in. And then I'm going to move this down and just shrink it ever so slightly. Because this is my button. Extrude that face up. So it's sticking out some. And there's that little bit of a gap around which when we bake will really give us some nice information, especially with our ambient occlusion. So lift that up to kind of where we need it to be. And then I'm literally just going to select all my edges, bevel, turn the chamfer off, 0 0.05, just to soften those corners, those edges just enough. Like so. And then I can duplicate, I can move this into place here. There, thereabouts. And then I want to do the same in this, but I want to take the face paint. So select those faces, and then I just want to grow selection once, and then duplicate that face. Center pivot, move that up, and I've duplicated something else as well. So but I have still got that separated. Let me just come back to live before I've done it. I just want to, I'm just going to double check that I've not done that before. No, I haven't. So one, two, three. And to be fair, why not just do them both together? One, two, three. And to be actually, I'm going to leave that one because then that will give me I don't have to shrink it. So I'm just going to right shift, right click and extract. Not extract. Duplicate is what I want. Duplicate face. One. Two. Faces. And then I'm going to shift right click and extrude. I'm going to hold down V and snap it to the same height as these. And then I will do something slightly different with this one. I want to have a supporting edge loop in there to hold that curve from that point. Oops, I just hit A, which uh, zoomed out then. And I'm just actually going to combine the buttons. And then with this one, I don't want all the edges. But I want most of them, so I want all of these. Oops. But then also these. You don't need this bottom face, but I've got it in there anyway. Okay, and then I want to bevel. And the fraction is limited, but that's fine. Turn chamfer off. Three in the keyboard, and that's why there's something, an error there. 
which isn't happening on this one. So do you know what? I don't care, I'm just going to delete it. This one worked fine. So I'm just going to duplicate it. Oops, hang on. Those faces. And I will duplicate those faces. Select the duplicate and then I want to center my pivot. Where are you? Center pivot. And then I'm going to hold D and V and then snap my pivot actually to this middle point here and then do negative one. And then it will flip it into place because we are all working nice and symmetrically and it should fit nicely, which it does. Then select everything, three in the keyboard, turn off this. And now we've got those buttons in place. And when we bake, we'll get some nice information going on from that. Get that slightly out. What's it like over here? A little bit. That is in. But it is slightly out there. Is it because of that edge? Yes, it is. So that supporting edge that I put in is holding the shape a bit too much. So if I delete that, then we've got the that edge. So just be aware of that. There we go. Now it's fine. And uh, so one, two, and then I'm combine those again. We've got that. And I'm just going to save once more. And I'm going to delete the history of everything. Try and clean that up. And then I'm going to just rename. So let's just have a look at that. That. Is in this group, which it doesn't need to be, but delete history is not getting rid of it. So I'm going to middle mouse click that and drag it out underneath. And then I can just delete that group because I don't want it. Um, and then that is going to be my uh, radio display. Radio buttons and what are you plane delete you don't need that no, that was the one that i had earlier um so then we're still keeping everything nice and neat this should be the radio body which i don't know why it's not labeled so never mind radio body and I'm just going to middle mouse and drag that out and there's n that's the image planes fine that can be deleted radio body radio dividers there we go so everything's nice organized between the keyboard smoothing and smoothing well looking okay so I'm just going to save that once more and we're good to move on